Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for House Made, and today we are going to be talking about the True Tilt Table. This is something I've talked about on the Work For It podcast. If you're not listening to the Work For It podcast, go out and find it on any major podcasting platform. Um, I also discuss this on my Instagram feed and on Facebook, so go out there and find me there. Uh, that's where I regularly keep up to date with the stuff that I've got going on right here in my workshop and studio. Uh, the True Tilt Table is one of those uh, things that was brought to me. I actually did not design this. This is not my uh, concept. This was brought to me by a friend. His name is Brent. He owns a small knife making company called Bald Man Knife and Tool. Uh, give him a follow as well. And um, he wanted to come up with a way to grind bevels on knives that was similar to like a machining type operation, but it's like kind of a mix between a bevel jig and doing it by hand. And when he showed me how it worked, it blew my mind. Now, we've uh, had this in production now for, oh gosh, probably about four or five months. But we've been, we've been really trying to perfect uh, how to fabricate it and how to get it to fit up to the Revolution Gen 4. And if you have a Revolution Gen 4, uh, this will bolt right up to your standard work rest with a little bit of modifications. It's actually not that difficult to fabricate, but it's important that it's done the right way so that you can get the most efficient use out of the tool. So anyway, what you're going to see in this video is uh, me fabricating it. We have to slightly modify the work rest arm. And then uh, Brent's going to join me here in the studio and we are going to demo this thing and it's going to blow your mind how quickly you're going to be able to put a hand ground bevel accurately on a knife. And it's one of those things where, for me personally, I, I make knives, but I don't make that many knives. And uh, my, my ability to uh, grind bevels accurately is, by hand at least, is limited. I can do it. It takes me a long time. Uh, it's a nerve-wracking experience for me. So I tend to use uh, like a TR Maker jig or you know something along those lines to help me keep me honest basically when it comes to my bevels. This tool, however, is a mix of kind of both of those things where you set it up on the machine, it sets your bevels, uh, your angle for your bevels, and you're using this with your hands instead of actually switching a jig in and out and bolting and unbolting and all of that so it becomes extremely efficient, fast, and clean. Anyway guys, let's just jump right into the build. Let's get started. Screw it. Let's do okay, it. Okay, the first step of this is actually taking your Gen 4 uh, tooling arm that holds the work rest. So this is the work rest tooling arm receiver here. And we're gonna just unbolt all of this. Feels like ages ago that I etched this on here. That's the, uh, this is one of the first prototype knobs that I created back when we were working on Gen 4. All right, so now that we've got this, uh, this, this tooling arm all kind of just on its own, we, we really just need to take and cut a 45 right along this, the, basically the bottom of this corner, a 45 degree angle up. We just need to get rid of this, uh, this metal that's right here. Um, and the reason is, is that impedes the angle in which we need to uh, turn the true tilt table up towards the platen. So this is just in the way. It's not doing anything. So, hey, let's just make the Gen 4 a little bit lighter. So now you can see when I made that cut, I'm leaving enough room between this top bolt hole and where the cut's going to be. If you go right from the corner, it's actually going to get, you're going to, it's going to go right into your hole. So you don't want that. Uh, you just want to take off, you know, as much as you can without impeding these holes. This is uh, just a simple die grinder made by Jet and then uh, by these little pads. Uh, to hold on these like hook and loop uh, sanding discs you can buy these on Amazon the whole thing was not expensive and this is a tool I use all the time now one pro tip is to add one of these like little valves to the bottom of it that way you have a variable speed die grinder now when you do turn the air down using this 
uh, you lose torque, but it's great for just minor tweaks and deburring. All right, so now that we've got that uh, notch cut and deburred nice and smooth there, I'm going to go ahead and just reassemble this. So now we have all that clearance. Man, I couldn't have planned that any better. Look at that. Look at how perfect that is. All that clearance now. All right, so here's the actual tr true tilt table kit. Comes with this little tooling arm and the actual quarter inch plate. And that's it. I mean, it's as simple as that. Uh, we did go ahead and laser etch into the bottom of each one. Uh, these uh, nice little marks back here. This is a QR code you can scan and it'll take you to a page that'll help you with the instructions component of this. And then also it'll take you to, in that same page, it'll have a copy of this video. And then over here, we've got the, the little square mark here for where we're gonna put our, um, our tooling arm. And this is an approximate, all right? So the, the concept here is that you're gonna set this down on the inside and you're gonna check it for level, okay? Just take a square, just make sure that everything looks fairly level, all right? And it's not super important because every revolution grinder or, I mean, you could probably bolt this up to just about any 2x72 at this point, but you would wanna modify where this guy goes. Uh, but we're gonna just simply Put this together just like this, kind of eyeball it, doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to put one tack, just one tack in here, and that's going to be kind of a strong tack, but it's going to be just a single tack. So let's clamp this down, and we'll put the, the tack in there, and then we're going to fit it up to the machine, and that's where the tuning of this device actually starts. All right, so that's our first weld, just a one quick tack. Nothing more, because what we're going to do is we're going to line this table up on the actual grinder the way it's going to be set up. So we're going to tune that now. Okay, so this is how a traditional Gen 4 grinder is going to be set up with the standard work rest. This is what comes with the kit. And what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and take that out, set that aside. And then you can see here's our newly fabricated, modified, I should say, Gen 4 work rest arm. Take that out. We're going to pop this out and down into the lower receiver of the Gen 4, essentially just swapping the two. So now the work rest receiver has the platen arm in it, and the platen receiver has the work rest arm in it. At this point, you can loosen the knob for the D plate and rock it back kind of about, I don't know, to about. I'm going to say about 50 degrees would be about right. 52 degrees, maybe. 50, 52 degrees, something like that. We kind of have to play with it. And then slightly lock it into place. And then we're going to take our true tilt table, the one that we just fabricated um, on the other uh, table there, and we're going to set this into the machine. And by the way, we're going to want to loosen up this bracket so that we can rock it back. Okay, then we're going to slide the D plate up to the table and kind of match everything all up. And what we're looking for is equal distance between the platen and the spacing between the on the table here. We're going to get that going and we're going to lock the uh, the D plate arm into place so we have like uh, we want to make sure everything's kind of locked into place now that it's slid up like this so that we can get a good gauge as to where this table is sitting make sure it's locked down in all locations both here and on the side here where the knob is to, to lock it in so everything's in place now I can clearly see the distance here and I can tweak the table like this to get my distance correct right here. And because there's only one tack in there, we're kind of manipulating that, that tack into the right position. 
That looks pretty great. Now we have one more axis that we want to check before we pull this out and finish our welds. Okay, so the last thing we're going to want to check, you're going to grab some sort of a straight edge. But you want to check to see that you have an equal distance across the two tables, like from this side to this side against the platen. What, what, you're, what you really want to make sure is that the height from the platen to the edge is the same as the height from the platen to the edge on that side. So from side to side, we're just going to check it. This one actually looks really good, does not need anything at all, uh, no modification. So I think we're set. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loosen the bolt on the side here and pop the table out, trying not to modify where we have the, 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 the tooling arm not being bent. So if, you're, if you pull it out and you feel a little resistance, you may want to put it back in and just double check that it all looks good. Look at your spacing, got everything you need. Yep, looks good. Let's loosen it up and go finish our welds. Okay, so we're back at the fab table now and uh, what we're gonna do is instead of putting welds on the outside of this, I'm actually going to put them down on the inside. Now, if you're TIGging this, obviously you may not have that choice, but with a MIG welder or a stick welder, you can get down in there and give it these, uh, just these nice little tacks down inside of here. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want a whole lot of uh, built up weld around the outside of this. I like that table to sit as flat as possible in that receiver tube, and I might grind this one down just a little bit just so I can get that extra clearance. So the welds down on the inside of this are going to solve that problem. It's a little hard to see, but they're down in there. Just in one in each corner, enough to hold it. That's good. Let's go test fit it up again. All right. Everything looks like it's lined up. Now I can take this, loosen it up, and we can throw a belt on the machine. How awesome is that? The next step is we're gonna bring in Brent from Bald Man Knife and Tool, and he's gonna do a demo for us on how to use the table. Yo, what's up? I'm Brent from Bald Man Knife and Tool. I am here to talk to you about the True Tilt Attachment. Today, we're gonna to grind out and show you how I grind my signature blade. So this is the thicker clipper. This is a two and a half inch blade, quarter inch thick stock. I've already marked where my edge needs to be, so I have a good guide there. Because I do these, I know my angle that I want for my bevels, which on these quarter inch thick, I go with a 10 and a half degree bevel, and that gets me where I wanna be. All right, so let's take a minute and we'll talk about why I set my bevel angle at 10 and a half degrees. On these thicker clippers, being a quarter inch thick steel, um, I needed to go with an aggressive angle. So I went with a 10 and a half degree angle. Now the same blade shape that I use with an eighth inch thick steel, I go to uh, about a seven, somewhere between a six and a seven degree, depending on how high I want that bevel to go up. Now, depending on what blade you're gonna be grinding, how long it is, how tall it is, and what the thickness of the steel is, is what's going to determine what you set your work rest angle at. So you're gonna to have to play with the first couple blades to figure out where you want that set at. We will put a link in the description with my suggested angles for the blades that I grind and those thicknesses to give you an idea. And then you can grab a blade and you can start playing with your angle that you want on yours. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to zero out our angle gauge to our platen. Once that angle gauge is zeroed out, we can now move over to the work rest. And I'm gonna set this at 10 and a half degrees. All right, and now we can grab our blade and we can start grinding. If you have a sharpening choil or if you just mark that with a scribe, you'll be able to line this up without having to hang your head over looking at the edge of the blade just by going off that choil. So your plunge lines will start off, they'll be even each time whenever you transition to each side. The second thing is I'm gonna be holding all my pressure 
against the handle side of the blade and I'm just going to be supporting the blade with my hand on this. Not paying attention, not to push pressure. Once I start grinding these bevels, if you're putting too much pressure on the blade side, you're gonna dig in and get uneven grinds. I've found it really helpful not to necessarily hold your head over and be looking at this scribe line, but to be standing back, looking straight on at the blade and looking at the sparks. That'll give you an idea of what part of the blade you're actually hitting the belt with, and that will help with even consistent grinds on both sides. We're gonna fire it up in the forward running direction for the belt at about 50% speed. Uh, let's get grinding. Okay, let's see how long it takes us to put a bevel in on this side of the blade. I already have a bevel over here, but we're going to see how quick we can do this. So this is the grind that I just finished there that you saw in a couple minutes. Uh, this was the first side I did and that's the second side. Now these are rough grinds, but you can see already how close those grinds are. Now you see these scratch marks here because this is preheat treat and I haven't done my finished sanding, any of my finished work, these scratches don't bother me. But when you get around to doing your finish work uh, post heat treat, what I've found is really a big help in keeping those scratches down is get some electrical tape. I use a two inch wide electrical tape and I run it right up to this bevel because you're putting all your pressure against the handle. Uh, you don't need to run that tape all the way up in here, but you can, you can run that tape up as far as you want, but that really helps gives just that little thin layer to keep the blade off of the work rest, uh, off the true tilt there, and keep those scratches from happening. And you can always go back and uh, hand sand those away, but just to help with that, use a little bit of electrical tape on your finished work. All right, so you just saw Brian put together the true tilt, and then you saw me demo using it. The beautiful thing about the true tilt is you get a quick, consistent bevel grind each time. You also get feedback every time you're grinding, you get to feel the heat from the blade, post heat treat, so you're not overheating that blade while you're grinding, like you would uh, typically. It's hard to get a, a feedback on the temperature of a blade when you're using a bevel grinding jig. They're great, but that's what I found is I don't like that I don't get the feedback of pushing into that blade and feeling how hard I'm pushing, and I also don't get the temperature feedback. So. If you like this true tilt, if you want to speed up your grinding and make it quick and consistent, then you need to go to housemade.us and grab yourself a true tilt work rest. So thanks Brent for hanging out in the workshop and studio. Really appreciate you coming by and doing that demo. Make sure you go check out Brent on Instagram, bald, bald man knife and tool. Not really sure why they call him that. And go to his website, baldmanknifeandtool.com. 
A uh, couple caveats about the True Tilt table. One thing that you're really going to want to pay attention to is you notice those sparks when you're using the flat platen, they kind of shoot down and towards the user. That is something you're going to want to avert by using a really nice leather apron. I've been asked all about my leather apron ever since I upgraded to this one. My co-host, Ben Butler, on the, on the Work For It podcast actually makes these. You can go to his website, butlerbuilt.us, and you can get yourself a custom handmade uh, leather apron. He does really amazing work, and I, I really, truly appreciate the apron, Ben. Thank you so much. And listen, guys, if you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you click that little bell, you'll get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. Now, there's many ways to support the work I do right here in my workshop and studio. And by far, the best way is to go to housemade.us, buy pieces, parts, and plans, the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project. We've got the true tilt table. We've got wheels. We have merch now. We have t-shirts, really cool shirts that are hand printed right here in Florida. We've got uh, tooling and uh, like I said, the true tilt table and all kinds of other cool stuff. Go check that out, housemade.us and support my work. I would truly appreciate that. And listen guys, I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House and this has been House Made. Better, worse, better. And if you like this video, comment down below, like and subscribe to this channel and maybe you can see more of me instead of Brian. <laughs>